Welcome to Life Extension Live. I'm Dr. Mike, and this is... Dr. Crystal. Great uh, to have you guys join us today. Um, it's We're right in the middle of summer. Yes, it is hot, are. and that sun is beating down. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I, you know, we know at this time of the year, a lot of people are getting ready. School starting again soon, and so people are making the last-minute plans mm-hmm. to be outside in the doors, out, outside, um, not indoors. And so we thought... You know, let's remind people of how important taking care of your skin is during yes, this time. Yes, and kind of clarifying the world of sunscreens, yeah. sunblocks, all that, sun clothing, all is all sun yeah. hats, SPFs, <laughs> and da da da, and all this kind. Of, so we're going to get into all that today. Um, listen, it, this is important. By the way, real quick, um, having five or more sunburns in your life—that's not a lot. Five or more sunburns doubles your risk of developing the worst skin cancer, melanoma. Doubles your risk? Doubles your risk. That's high. That's high. If you're a kid or you have kids, if they get one blistering sunburn, Mm -hmm. that doubles their risk for melanoma when they're adults. Now, I did read that stat, and that was a little scary. You have kids. You have kids. And so you're thinking... Now's the time you really have to protect them. So yeah. my kids, they don't like I, it, but I'm you doing gotta do it. Best you got to do it. It's so funny. And I'm glad you're, because I remember we, I grew up in Southern California. Remember mm-hmm. I told you that? Um, and we were at the beach all the time. And I don't think I ever put anything on. Oh, no. Now, but I'm, I am more Mediterranean. Okay. I'm more, so I got probably less risk there, but I do protect myself now. Yeah. Okay, good. And yeah. do you see a dermatologist and have them do the full I scan? just did that um, two years ago. All right. And I got a free check, and I don't have to go back. It was like another no, two or Dr. three years. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everything, everything is good there. But yeah, listen, we got to protect our skin. Um, and so on today's show, let's get into this. On today's show, um, we're going to talk about why there's no more sunblocks out there. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. We're going to talk about ingredients you need to know. <laughs> Why do you look at me like that? And um, get into like the best way to apply, which ones to use, how to mm. apply it. And of course, there's a lot of little nuggets we're going to talk about right. today mm-hmm. in, in, in the show. So let's go and get started. And s- step number one, we need to understand what UV is. Yes. UVA, UVB, UVC. UVC. This is a nice graphic just, just to kind of show The difference between UVA, UVB, because there's, you know, sunscreens protect against UVB or SPF. Yeah. Is is protecting against UVB. But there's A. But then there's A. Look how deep A goes in the skin. Very dangerous. Associated with skin cancer. Of course, they're all associated with some wrinkles, right? Oxidative (laughs) damage in the skin. Yeah. Uh, But skin sunburns, that's kind of that that UVB UVB. radiation. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about how you can protect yourself from all of this. Yeah, yeah. And so we just not that simple. And we just wanted to start there. That's important. A lot of people don't understand there's different types of UVs. Mm -hmm. It's B, it's A and B that we're that we need to focus on the most. Little old C gets stuck up in the cloud. So we don't have to worry (laughs) about that guy. Right. Right. Okay. So let's move on now. Um, interesting. If you go into where I mean, you can buy products like this anywhere nowadays, yeah. right? Uh, you will not find anything labeled sunblock anymore. Tell us what's going on there. That's right. Well, in 2011, first short answer is there is no 100% way to block the sun. Yeah. So it was just a term that was misleading people to think I can put on sunblock and now I can go out and just sunbathe and just do what all I want to do. Yeah. I don't have to Burn. worry about anything yeah. because it's blocking the sun. And now we know that is not the case. In 2011, the FDA announced manufacturers cannot label sunscreens as waterproof or sweatproof or identify their products as sunblocks yeah. because these claims overstate their effectiveness. Yeah, and that, and that just puts people at risk because as you said, people... They feel it's it's a it's a fake confidence. Exactly. Right. And you're putting this stuff on and now I, I can go out and I don't have to worry about it. Right. And, yeah. So what that means for you, it means that if you're out and you're looking on the shelves and you're trying to find something labeled as sunblock, yeah. you're not going to find it. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. I was out with my sisters. We were playing pickleball. You ever play pickleball? I've never played pickleball. It's a lot of fun. And we were in the sun. We had our sunscreen on. And at some point, it was maybe 30 minutes, like, you guys, we should get in. Let's get out of the sun mm-hmm, for a take a break. Mm-hmm. And my one sister's like, well, I, I put my sunscreen on. I'm perfectly fine. And there's this 
there's this feeling people get yes. that's not real. You should, you got to get out of the sun once in a while, no matter what. Um, so, so what happened then with the sunblocks? Those kind of ingredients are still available, but they're all under the umbrella of sunscreen now. And there's two types of sunscreens. We got a graph for that. Yeah. So there's the chemical sunscreen and the physical sunscreen. So what, what the, the products formerly known as sunblock would be under that category for physical sunscreen. Yeah. And, they, and they re, they're, they're physical because they're bouncing off the light. Exactly. They kind of provide that physical barrier. And then the sunscreens are kind of, or the sun, the chemical sunscreens, <laughs> right? We're going to be all over the The chemical <laughs> versions are the versions that's more absorbing that light. Yeah. And yeah. we'll kind of talk about some of the pros and cons later in right, the show. Right. But at the end of the day, it's all sunscreens now, and it's either physical or chemical. Right. Okay. All right. What about SPF? That's another very confusing thing to people. Yes. There's a lot of, I think, misinformation about SPF. Mm -hmm. Do you need really need the higher amount? Do you, um, does SPF really do any good? I mean, there's just a lot of questions right. about it. So, first of all, what, what SPF specifically? Mm -hmm. Make sure I get this right. Yeah. Right. It's it's me it's measuring how well it blocks UVB. That's number one. Right. UVB. Not A. Right. UVB. Now, that doesn't mean your sunscreen doesn't block some A. That, we'll, we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. But the number SPF is all about UVB. UVB. So I, I have one stat. Now, I know you okay. have better stats. <laughs> Dr. Crystal always has better stats. And that's great. Um, it, so at, let me just use SPF 15. Okay. So SPF 15 simply means if you apply it correctly in the right amount, <laughs> that's a big if. Um, if you apply it right in the right amount, it means that you can stay out in the sun 15 times longer and not get a sunburn versus if you didn't have it. Yes. Yeah, so I said that right, right? I, I think that's right. It would take 15 times as much UVB exposure, right, exposure to develop the sunburn okay. compared to not having that. So it's not 15 minutes. It's not okay. It's not 15 minutes. It's, 15 it's exposure. Times that, longer. Yeah, the exposure to UV. Exactly. Okay, all right. Another way to look at it. This is how I like this, to look the, at it. Her stats are better. <laughs> just forget. What, just forget what I just said. So SPF 15 blocks 93 percent of UVB radiation, meaning seven percent of you, that UVB. 15. That's 15. Okay. SPF. That's SPF 15. Okay. 98%, so 7% still getting in. Okay. Then we move up to 30%. SPF 30 is blocking 97% of UVB. Mm, that's better. So, yeah. So only 3% is getting, getting through. Okay. And then you start looking at SPF 50 blocking 98%. SPF 100 blocks 99%. Not 100%. Not 100%. Not 100%. People think that. They're There's like, no 100%. SPF 100. No. I have full coverage. 1% still gets in. And that 1%, that you know, who knows what that might cause. Yeah. Yes. Now, Dr. Mike, I know in past lives, <laughs> past well, shows, we, we, we kind of said it doesn't, the, the percentage differences is Between, not. Yeah, we used to that. say, let's just say what we used to say. Yeah. 30 is enough. You're, you're only getting another percent or two protection from the 50. But when you look at the amount being blocked, give us that. It really does make a difference. Right. So you may think, okay, 97 versus 98 versus 98, yeah. whatever. But if SPF 30 is letting 3% in and SPF 50 is letting 2% 2 in, two. You're, you're letting that's about 50% 50, 50 more. That's a 50% increase. In, yes. So, yeah. so it does make sense. It makes sense. Now... I think it makes sense for the people also who really have special health concerns where they have to protect themselves. Yeah, Maybe well, there are it, medications that medications sun sensitivity. But what about just, you know, your maybe some people just have more fair skin. Right. You know, there so there's you know there's um depending on your skin type, things you might be mm -hmm. taking, uh, absolutely a 50 even 100 might, yeah, might be Yeah, so don't believe the the hype when people say it's a complete waste of money. It's not. It, it's, not. it's an individualized decision. Yeah. So we're changing how we are saying this. Right, but 30 is a good standard number 30 is, now. We and have I, to say I, that. I'm so glad. You, 30 is probably where most people need to be, and they're fine. Right. But for other people, 50 is probably better, even 100, maybe even better than that. 
Yeah. Okay. So that's your <laughs> SPF 50. That was a oh, lot. But. Oh, no, we're not else. done. <laughs> there's something else. What about the UVA? Uh, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> yeah, so how do you know that you're getting the protection from UVB and UVA? Well, well now you don't know that with SPF because that's just B. Right. So the language that you look for is broad spectrum. Yeah. That includes ingredients that block UVA. Yes. And that's why you'll see often on your labels, there's about four, sometimes five different types of chemicals in there yeah. to make sure they get that broad spectrum. I, I don't you find, I mean, you know, with kids, you, you're buying this stuff a lot more than I am probably. A broad, that's pretty consistent in the market, though, it right? It really is at yeah. this point. And the FDA is making adjustments to that as well, where if you, uh, if 30, if your sun protection is 30 or more, there's some changes now where it has to be broad spectrum right. in order to be classified as SPF 30. Well, let's talk a little bit more about sunscreens in general. Right? We already know. Hannah, can you do us a favor and put up that one graphic again about the, the there, there you go. Hannah. So again, that, that's just, well, she's way over there. Um, that's just a great thing to remember right mm -hmm. there. Sun, no sunblocks anymore. Right. Just sunscreens. You got the physical, which used to be the sunblocks. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. They're just a barrier. Mm -hmm. And then you got the chemical sunscreens. Now, chemical sunscreens, probably the most common ingredient you're going to see is oxybenzone. Mm -hmm. um, Avobenzone. Avobenzone. Very common. Mm -hmm. They work very well. Um, they don't leave like the any white whitish hue, hue stuff mm -hmm. on you. Um, however, because they're not penetrating as deep, they stay in that skin surface, mm -hmm. some skin allergies increase a little bit with those. Right, so people who have uh, sensitive skin. Yeah, well tell us about your son. Yeah, I, I, for my son, I stick to the, um, the physical sunscreens. Yep. And that's going to be usually the zinc oxide, right. the titanium dioxide. They are likely to leave the white hue, mm -hmm. but they um, they're they are less likely to cause, cause the, the skin yeah. irritation. Yeah. So so again, it it kind of is a preference, mm -hmm. you know. If you and by the way, um, when you no matter what type you get, but especially if it's the the chemical sunscreen, before you would slap it all over your body because you, you change brands, ingredients yeah. can change. You should always test. That's true. Take a little bit, put it on the back of your hand, leave it there for 15, 20 minutes and make sure there's no rash, no mm -hmm. redness. Because mm -hmm. the last thing you want to do is not test it. Put something all over your body and now you're like, you know, that's right. not good. Yes. So test, test, test is, is the key. Um, you, there is one downside to the physical. Maybe less allergies is good. They do cause a little bit of maybe some DNA damage. I know, Dr. Mike, but you compare that to the DNA damage from the sun, there's no comparison. Yeah, put, so don't, I mean, even though you might see that, you might see some bloggers and stuff like that talk about that, right. the the amount of damage is gonna be insignificant con compared to what the sun can do. That's right. Right, so we definitely wanna protect our skin. Um, now that's, so those are your basic sunscreens. There are some other interesting nutrients yes. out there that can help, and one is rosmarinic acid. Yes, rosmarinic acid. Uh, it is, uh, it topically, if you see it in a formula, has been shown to boost its SPF by 41%. So that's a nice nourishing so wait, so antioxidant nutrient. Add it to. That's add it to a sunscreen, some sunscreen. Boost up your SPF. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. I so like that. So you can look for that. Yeah. Um, I didn't, but I, you can, what about, you know, rosmarinic acid, it, it can be taken orally as well. Mm -hmm. Do we get some of the same protection or do we know? Is I haven't it, are, seen that. It needs to be topical. Right. Okay. Now, one of my favorites, because I just like to say it, is polypodium. That's Leucotomus, great. Right? Leucotomus or leucotomus, whatever. Polypodium is a cool desert fern mm -hmm. that stays healthy and green, even though it's being exposed to so much sunlight. So scientists were like, how is that plant doing that or that fern doing that? Turns out um, polypodium has some chemicals or compounds, mm -hmm. natural compounds mm -hmm. that can actually um, block some of that UVB, UVA um, light. Yeah. Here's my favorite. What? Carotenoid. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Carrots. 
uh, peppers, did, did you, sweet potatoes. Hold on. Hold on. Doc, Dr. Crystal, she likes it so much. She gave so much to her daughter. Her daughter turned orange. She did. The true <laughs> story. I went to the doctor and the doctor was just like, uh, She's your orange. daughter's pretty orange. <laughs> What do you better cut back on to all of those carrots and sweet potatoes? And you probably, because it was probably gradual, you probably didn't even notice. Didn't know. But it took I'm somebody like, else to be like, oh. Um, you know, we look back at the pictures now yeah, yeah. and we think, oh, well, man. She was orange. She sort of <laughs> overdid it. But there is research that those those antioxidants and those carotenoids can protect the skin. Absolutely. That's a great, so so you, it's good to eat that stuff. Just yeah, don't turn orange. That beta carotene. Yeah. Just don't <laughs> turn, turn orange. Now, another big thing when it comes to um, sunscreens is spray versus creams, right? Oh, yeah. Sprays are all over the place now because it's convenient. It, it is. It's easier. There's no doubt it's easier. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I think before we get into this, at the end of the day, it's still a preference. Well, the, and the sprays can reach some of those hard to reach places like yeah. your back. Shh. Yeah, because if you don't have that, then you got to get somebody else to do that, there and that's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you know the person, that's yeah. really weird. Yeah, that's uh, Hey, stranger, can you go rub this on my back? <laughs> yes. I probably don't want to be doing that. <laughs> True. <laughs> so, um, so one of the things um, about sprays, and this is I learned this recently, mm -hmm. doing all this research for this, is sprays are now using um, a form of a lot of these chemicals, mm -hmm. right, uh, with nanoparticles. Yes, and you're seeing it even in some of the topical ones. We learned that, yeah, because at first we thought it was just the sprays. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and nanoparticles, eh, the debate's still out there if these are okay, whatever. Um, but one thing about the sprays, if, if nanoparticles aren't great for you, is people inhale some of that stuff. And that's maybe the issue yes. that some scientists are a little worried about. Mm -hmm. But then we find out you're getting in the creams anyways, and that's penetrating your skin. That's true. So at the end of the day, it's still more important to protect your skin. So don't nanoparticle or not you there's will find some, some. Yeah. this one uh this form is uh it says non-nano on the label so you're starting to see some formulations but if it says non-nano yeah you can expect to have the white hue yeah so, so it's kind of like do you want to look good or do you want to have <laughs> that's a pretty listen that's a question people are going to ask right right because yeah. that's the whole purpose of the nanoparticles yeah. especially with those mineral sunscreens yeah. Yeah. is to make it where that white hue is not as it's evident. not as evident yeah and if you are doing one that's a that's a physical sunscreen and, and you get that white hue what might happen is people might use less oh. to not quite ha and now you're For not sure. really protecting um yourself so so sprays are good Better is probably the creams, mm -hmm. right? Um, yes. That's probably the, the uh, best, uh, better way to go. But the best, you want to show them my some favorite. of your stuff? Yes. Yeah, so I went in my closet. Oh, I still have hangers on it. That's okay. <laughs> my sun protection shirts. And these are UPF factor. U so when you're looking for them, the UPF factor ultraviolet protection factor okay and so the clothing especially the darker ones are really great because they're absorbing some of that light yeah and they're uh, like their fabrics are light the fabric is they're very not light. They, and they, they're breathable yeah they can breathe this is one of my husband's fishing shirts oh. and uh so you can see <laughs> You can see, but these shirts are they're great very and they're light. super lightweight. Yeah, this is really light. And they have like a little air pocket in the back. Yeah, so you got to cool off a little <laughs> so bit. So you can cool off, but these, and they, you know, they're long sleeve. And you would think, <laughs> man, you see people with these You're making on. a mess right now. I am. She's, That's okay. She's making They a have mess. it, even the hats. And the hats, uh, find the hats where they have the, the piece hanging down to protect your neck, Dr. Mike. Yeah. And these are also SPF. Hey, it's interesting point about that. There's there's body parts that people forget about. Uh, melanomas is pop up in the back of your neck. That's true. Bottom of your feet oh. is often a common ah, yes. um, um, place where people finally identify a melanoma. So you got to get you got to get all over the place. Very true. You're gonna use a cream. You got to get it on. <laughs> As a matter of fact, since we're talking about creams, mm -hmm. right? Um, oh wait! By the way, that that what is this again? UF US UPF U, UPF Ultraviolet Protection Factor. A UPF of fifteen mm -hmm. in a study, right, was like way better than an oh, SPF yes. fifteen. There was or, a study that compared creams to the clothing, 
and the clothing was more protective. And what we're finding is the creams, one, people don't apply them properly. Two, they're not using enough. Three, they're getting in the water and yeah. they're not reapplying. So when you look at all of that, it's just going with the shirts. It's just, it's the, just best it's, way. It's the, it's the better it's way the to best go. Way. Yeah. All right. So now we got to talk about applying this stuff. <laughs> I was hoping we we're going to do some shots. No shots, Dr. But, Mike. But this, this is important. Yes. Right. So if you're doing a, let's focus on the creams, right? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to do a full shot. Now, this is where maybe you and I are a little different. A full, <laughs> so you got to fill that cream up. Right. Who's oversized shot glasses? It's Rops's. <laughs> you have to fill that up. And I, I was taught that it's one shot for every major body part. You said it was just one shot for the whole body. One shot for the whole body, but that's still a lot of cream. Yeah, it's a lot. Most people are putting like a quarter size. Oh yeah. And that's it. That's not enough. It's that shot glass size and then reapplying is, is, is critical. Right, and you can look on your labels. It will tell you how often you need to reapply. The general rule is about every two hours, mm -hmm. but it all depends if you're swimming. If sweating. You, if sweating, yes. Which out, out in South Florida, everybody's sweating. And that's why I like the shirts. You right. don't have to reapply. That's right, there you go, you don't, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, good, here's a common question. Okay. And we're going to wrap it up with this last question. Do you, Should I be wearing sunscreens every day, even if I'm not planning on being outside for a very long time? Yes. I knew you were going to say yes. Of course. Yeah. Every day. Um, you got to remember, too, clouds that matter. UVB and UVA. Remember those UV lights? They come right through those clouds. So cloudy days, taking your dog for a walk. Yes, if you're skiing, skiing that's a, that's a big, big one. one. Yeah, People all that reflection. Well, even exactly. if you're just out on a boat in the water, that's true. You'll get more. Those sun rays come off that off mm -hmm. the water, and so make sure you're covering yourself, protecting yourself every day with either a physical sunscreen or a chemical sunscreen. Remember, no more sunblocks. Um, or a sun protection shirt. Or so, yes, and thank hats. you. And hats. And, and hats. sunglasses. Okay, there we go. Everything. Just get all. Oh, and protect your lips. And protect your lips. <laughs> You can take Dr. Crystal has kids because you definitely well, cover Well, you know, all. here's and one thing I would have to say. Many of us, if you're watching, you care about your health, yeah. right? You probably uh, take nutrients, you're eating well, and you're negating all of that if you are getting all of this oxidative damage, oxidative stress yeah. from the sun. So yeah. protection is it's just important. I think that's, that's a great way to, to end, end the show today. We do have a is it an article, right? There's um, an article. Lifeextension.com slash summertime, which goes through um, a lot of this information, but it, it goes into it deeper. Mm -hmm. There's other um, subtopics in that article. Again, lifeextension.com slash summertime. And before Go we end, let's just say hi. My dad is on. Hi. Thanks for watching. He's a big time sun protection guy. Awesome. Um, so we're, we're just happy to have you on, dad. And we want to thank everybody for watching. Now, some people watch this live. Some people watch it, you know, after, throughout the next week. Whenever you do watch it, we appreciate your comments, your, your likes, and of course your shares to get this information out to as many people as we can. Don't forget, we go live every Wednesday at noon Eastern time. That's every Wednesday at noon Eastern time. So hit the interested button. That's right. And that way, it'll tell you when we're about to go live so you never miss a show. That's every Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern time. I'm Dr. Mike. That's Dr. Crystal. We'll see you next time.